Okay, we're back, and we're doing a kind of a strange example here of some mechanics um, with momentum and collisions. And in particular, you know, usually most collision problems that you have, either just linear momentum is conserved or just angular momentum is conserved. So one question that comes up is, can, can you have cases where both momenta are conserved? And the answer is yes. This is a possibility. And uh, some examples that we can think about, um, in order for this to be true, we need two conditions to hold. Uh, one is for linear momentum. Like, when, when is linear momentum for a system actually conserved? Well, it's conserved when there's, there's no external forces acting on the system. Yet, when there's no friction forces, there's no you know, overall gravitational forces causing accelerations to happen in any particular direction. No pushes, no pulls, nothing's being kicked around. <laughs> um, it's just the collision itself. And so, uh, if you have that situation, then linear momentum will be conserved. For angular momentum in rotations, uh, that all depends on if there's any net torques on the system. So if there's nothing externally happening to the system, then angular momentum will also be conserved. So one one case you can imagine is let's say you have a, a meter sticker, you know, some sticker rod or something like that, lying on a flat surface. Okay, and there's no friction, maybe on a, a sheet of ice, let's say, or on an air table. Um, no part of it is is nailed down. Okay, so not only can it rotate, it can actually, the whole stick can move, both linearly and rotationally. Okay, so let's say you have that bar there, and, and then you shoot something at it. Okay, a little particle or ball comes flying in. Okay, so let's look at this picture here. So in the before picture, uh, the stick's at rest, it's just lying there. And here comes the particle that has the same mass and some initial speed. Okay, it's just moving linearly, and it rams in and sticks to the bar. Okay, that's the situation. This is an overhead view. Okay, remember, there's no friction, there's no net force, there's no net torque acting on the system. Now, when it hits and sticks to the bar, uh, a couple things happen. Okay, first, keep in mind that the center of the stick. Okay, is is normally the part or the point that the stick wants to rotate around. Okay, if it's just the stick by itself. But now when this little particle slams into it and hits it, um, not only will the bar start to rotate because the the particle is hitting at one of the ends of the stick, but it um, it's also you know since nothing's nailed down, it can also move forward. Okay, at least one point can move forward. What point moves linearly when you have the system, this, you know, this uh, an elastic collision happen and the two objects stick together? Well, it turns out when this little particle hits, there's a new center of mass that's going to be somewhere between the, the particle and the center of the, the bar. Okay, the center of the bar is the center of mass of the bar. Okay, where is that point? Where's the new center mass of the system? And that's this new point here. So the center mass of the system. Well, we can find that with our center of mass equation. Okay, so it turns out that um, if I if I call the bottom end of the bar our zero point. Okay, that means that the center of mass of the bar is, is where the mass of the bar is located. So that's going to be the mass of the bar, and that's located at half the length away from the bottom. Then you have the particle. Its coordinate is zero. Okay, and that's what we defined. Over the total mass, which is 2m.
Okay, and the, the mass is going to drop out, the M drops out, and what you're left with is L over 4. Okay, so that means that the center of mass of the system, when this collision happens, is, is at a, a quarter of the length of the bar from the bottom of the bar. Okay? It's the center of mass of the system. It's that point which is going to move in a straight line. That's what's shown here on this after picture. Okay, so since nothing on the bar is nailed down again, that's why it can move forward. But it's not the center of the bar that moves in a straight line. It's the center of mass of the system that moves in a straight line. Now that center mass of the system is also the axis of rotation for the system. So you're going to have it, it, it would look as if you threw a hammer through the air. Okay, uh, The center of mass of the hammer is closer to the, the head of the hammer. That's the point that's going to move in a straight line or in a parabola, depending on what you're doing with it. And the hammer is going to spin around that point in some weird wobbling way. This is going to do the same thing. <laughs> um, the the, the three-fourths length of the bar is going to be rotating around that center of mass of the system, and the particle at the bottom end of the stick is going to be rotating around that point as well. It'll look really funny when it does that, like a asymmetric dumbbell or something. So how, how do you work this out? Okay. Um, what's the setup? And again, we're, we're interested in the setup. There's no net force acting on the system. That means that linear momentum for the system is conserved. There's no net torque. There's no friction. There's no gravity affecting the motion. There's nothing. Okay. So if there's no net torque, then angular momentum is also conserved. So let's look at the before picture. Linearly, only the particle is moving. So your total linear momentum is just the mass of the particle times its linear speed. That's it. It's all in the x-direction. Now afterwards, the center of mass of the system, that point, will be moving and linear momentum has to be conserved for it. So that means after the collision, they stick together. So the mass of the particle and the mass of the bar are added together. And you have whatever that final velocity is for the center of mass of the system. So the final velocity of the center of mass of the system is just going to be half of the original speed of the particle. Okay. So that, that point is going to be moving forward at half the original speed of the particle. That's what that answer means. Now let's look at the rotation. There's going to be some final rotational speed around the center of mass of the system. Well, beforehand, uh, we have the particle moving relative to that center of mass of the system. So we, to find that, we have the, the linear momentum of the particle times the distance from that point. It's L over 4 that we found. And if it slams straight into the bar, it's a 90 degree angle between the radius and the velocity. Here's that radius line. That's right angle right there. That's the sine of 90. That's the, the initial angular momentum. Now afterwards, we, we have rotations going on. Okay, so uh, we need the moment of inertia. So, so basically we're looking for the final or, or total inertia times whatever the final angular velocity is around the center of mass of the system point. Well, I've calculated the total moment of inertia here. The moment of inertia of the stick, of the bar, around this new point, 
Okay, you can either calculate it with an integral, or what I used here is, is the so-called parallel axis theorem. Uh, there's a, I have another video on the parallel axis theorem, if, if you wanted to remind yourself of that or look it up. Um, but it turns out it's some weird fraction, 748 ml squared. <laughs> Okay, that's just for the bar. Don't forget that because these stuck together, you have to add the moment of inertia of the particle relative to that same axis of rotation, okay, the center of mass of the system. Well, it's a point mass, so that we can use generically mr squared. So it's the mass times L over 4 squared. And when we add those together, uh, you get 524 ml squared. Okay, so our angular momentum equation will look like okay, the total inertia is 524 ml squared times whatever the final angular speed is. So that allows us to figure out what omega final is as well. Uh, let's see, the mass drops out, one of the L's is going to drop out. Uh, let's see, we're going to have um, a 24 come up, divide by 5, that's going to be over 20, uh, the initial over L. Okay. And it looks like, what will that reduce down to? Um, and we can find out the angular speed. Okay, so this is a really weird case. Okay, keep in mind, fundamentally, what are we talking about? You have a collision. There's no external force. There's no external torque. So both types of momentum are conserved. The weird part is uh, we have to find this new center of mass of the system. That's the key point. That point moves forward in a straight line, conserving linear momentum. And it acts as the axis of rotation for the system rotating around it. Okay. And then we we can work out both types of conservation laws and figure out the two final speeds. That's linear speed of the center of mass of the system and the rotational speed of the system around that center of mass, okay, which is your, your axis of rotation. It's a weird case, these tend to be challenging for students. I know that because you're, you're just you're not used to thinking like this. Um, but in class, we'll, we'll do some other examples, and uh, hopefully, you'll get a, a more concrete feel for this. Okay, so I, I hope this helps, and uh, until next time, see you later.